Arizona eviction laws follow the same general eviction process as everywhere else. Send a clear and written notice, fill out the form, serve the tenant, attend the trial, and wait for judgment. But every eviction process is different and pretty dependent on the lease and rental agreement signed by the tenant and the landlord. It's always best to exercise meticulous file keeping to avoid errors that the tenant could possibly exploit. Now in this video, I'm gonna detail a summary for landlords and tenants to refer to when going through the eviction process, but make sure that you confirm these procedures with your county to make sure the entire process goes as smoothly as possible. Remember, I'm not an attorney and this isn't legal advice. I'm just trying to get a good baseline understanding out there for you and then contact your local attorney for a more in-depth explanation, especially in regards to your specific eviction case. Evictions can happen for a few reasons, or one reason is just because of a failure to pay rent on time. Rent is usually considered late one day past its due date. A grace period may be available if stated in the lease and rental agreement, but before the landlord can start the eviction process, they are required to give the tenant an official five day written notice to pay. If the tenant pays the rent within those five days, then the eviction process does not continue. If the tenant is unable to pay, the landlord reserves the right to continue with the eviction process. For reference, you can see statute 33-1368 as of 2020. So the rental lease agreement has to be upheld by both the tenant and the landlord for the entire duration of the tenant's stay. Agreements may vary from tenant to tenant, but if a tenant violates any terms from the agreement, the landlord must issue a 10-day notice to comply. If the tenant resolves the issue on time, the eviction process does not continue. Lease violations may include smoking in non-smoking areas, keeping pets in pet-free properties, lying about tenant's employment status, writing down false or misleading information on the rental application, the number of people that live in a rental unit, tenant's personal information, or the tenant's criminal and eviction history. And remember, tenants charged with writing down false or misleading information about their criminal and eviction history cannot be corrected. They have 10 days to vacate the property. So in short, don't lie, honesty is the best policy, just be honest with your landlord. And if the tenants fail to resolve the violations or leave the property on time, then the landlord may continue with the eviction. For a copy of your own Arizona lease agreement, visit Doorloop's forms page and download a template along with a bunch of other helpful forms. If a tenant has engaged in illegal behavior within the property, the landlord must issue an official written notice to vacate. The number of days a landlord gives a tenant to vacate is pretty much up to them. Examples of illegal activities are homicide, prostitution, theft, violence, or assault, unlawful discharge of a weapon, causing serious property damage, endangering the health, welfare, and safety of other people in the rental property, or involvement in the creation, distribution, and consumption of a controlled substance. Landlords are advised to keep a close eye on their tenants to make sure illegal behavior does not go unnoticed. If the tenant remains in the property after the notice period given by the landlord is up, then the eviction process can continue. Arizona law takes into account the health, building, safety, and housing codes. If a tenant violates any of these codes, the landlord must issue a five-day notice to comply to allow the tenant time to fix the problem. Violations under this code could include not throwing out the trash for long periods of time, inviting bugs and rodents into the property, damaging electrical wiring of the unit, or ruining the plumbing fixtures of a unit. The tenant has to finish repairs or fix the problem by the end of the five days, and if they are unable to do so, the landlord may continue with the eviction process. You can see ARS Statute 33-1341. In Arizona, landlords cannot evict tenants or force them to vacate the property without a probable cause. As long as the tenant does not violate any rules, they can also stay until their rental period ends. But if the tenant stays in the property even a day after their lease or rental agreement ends and has not arranged for a renewal, landlords can issue a written notice to move. Now, before filing an eviction with the court, you need to issue the tenant a notice to comply. And to make this easier for you, we actually have a free PDF or Word template that you can use, or you can use a step-by-step -step wizard that guides you through the entire process to make sure you're submitting the legally correct notice. Now, the step-by-step -step wizard will ask you to pay a small fee at the end, but it's a small price to pay to ensure legal compliance and protection. Can you imagine getting to the very, very end of this? Everything is going great for you, only to find out that you have to start over because you did the first part of the process as incorrect seems like a small price to pay to me. The eviction process can only begin after the issuance of the appropriate written notice. The landlord must have allowed enough time to pass before filing for the eviction. And the eviction process is as follows. Proceed to the justice court the rental property belongs to, file a complaint, and pay the fees. In Arizona, filing fees can amount to $35 if filing for justice court and $218 for superior court. 
It takes about five to 30 days from the notice to vacate slash quit issuance, depending on the reason for eviction and the lease agreement. The summons is issued on the same day the complaint is filed. A certified process server is in charge of serving the document to the tenant at least two days before the eviction hearing is scheduled. There are several methods to accomplish this. You can use a personal service where the court official delivers the summons and complaints to the tenant in person, or posting where the server leaves a copy of the document for the tenant. It's placed in a secure and visible position by the entrance of the tenant's rented property. Additionally, another copy is then mailed to the tenant via certified mail. Neither the landlord nor the lawyer is allowed to serve the documents to a tenant. Only a certified process server can do so. So then the tenant has at least two days before the eviction hearing to prepare. Either the landlord or the tenant can request for a postponement of the hearing, which is called a continuance, for three days in a justice court or five days in superior court. In the state of Arizona, a reply from the tenant is not necessary for the court date to be rescheduled. They only have to show up to the hearing. The landlord needs to support the claim with evidence and show it during the hearing. This can include, but is not limited to the following, a copy of the deed and the lease, rent receipts and ledgers, bank statements, witnesses, or photo and video documentation of the violation. If the judge ruled in favor of the landlord, the tenant then has five days to appeal the ruling, but if the eviction is for illegal activity, then the tenant only has 24 hours to appeal the ruling. The document should be served to the tenant at least two days before the hearing is scheduled. And if you want to learn more about Arizona's landlord-tenant laws, I'll leave a link to another video that I made covering that in the description below. The landlord has to provide a strong argument backed by solid evidence against the tenant. If the tenant does not show up to the hearing, the landlord wins by default. If the landlord does not win, they can still appeal within the five days post-judgment for a reconsideration. Eviction hearings are scheduled three to six days after the complaint was filed. If the eviction is about illegal activity, the hearing is then scheduled for three days after the complaint was filed. Tenants have anywhere from 24 hours to five days to appeal the ruling. If the landlord wins the case and the tenant does not appeal for reconsideration, a writ of restitution is issued no less than 12 to 24 hours after the landlord wins the eviction case if it was about illegal activity. For any other reasons for eviction, the writ of restitution is issued no earlier than five days after the judgment was issued. The writ of restitution gives the tenant somewhere between 12 hours and five days depending on the reason of eviction to vacate the property. The sheriff executes the writ as soon as they receive it. Once the writ is given to the tenant and or posted on the entrance to the rental unit, the tenant has to move out with additional time. Only the sheriff is allowed to remove the tenant by force. If the tenant refuses, they will be arrested. And if the tenant leaves behind any belongings, the landlord must notify the tenant in writing and give their tenant 14 days to reclaim their property. In the case that the tenant does not collect their property after 14 days, the landlord can sell or dispose of that property. Any money earned by the landlord from the tenant's belongings can be used to cover unpaid rent and any other outstanding costs. Money left over from this has to be sent back to the tenant. Just remember that even if the landlord wins the case, they are not allowed to engage in illegal methods of eviction. Tenants have between 12 hours and 5 days upon judgment being passed in favor of the landlord to vacate the property. But remember again, you're not allowed to evict anybody by force. Leave that job to the authorized officials. On average, it'll take anywhere from 9 to 41 days for a complete eviction process. If either the tenant or landlord applied for a re-judgment of the case, an additional five days could be added to the entire process. If the tenant disagrees with the eviction request and they reply to the court, it's important that you keep extremely good records of everything so that you can provide proof to the judge and, well, win your case. This is vital to your case and it can literally make or break it. So how can you stay organized? Well, you can keep a physical paper trail, but this gets pretty hard to search through and it takes up a lot of storage space. Not to mention things could get lost or damaged or stolen. In addition to your paper trail, scan every single document into your computer. You can find great scanners under four to $500 and I promise you the peace of mind is worth every penny. And once you scan those into your computer, back it all up. Store and back up everything on Dropbox, Google Drive, OneDrive, or any other option that is easily searchable. And last but not least, use a property management software to save all of your documents. You can save everything from lease agreements, violations, emails, notes, invoices, payments, reminders, maintenance requests, pictures, videos, anything you can imagine. And in a lot of cases, you can just scan your documents directly into your software. Easy, done. 
If the tenant doesn't pay rent and they dispute that claim, it's important that you show the judge the following. Show them your lease agreement, showing the terms of the agreement, when rent is due, and any penalties for the late payment. Show all payments. Show all the previous payments, how they were normally made, and what date they were normally paid on. Any payment returns, if they're check bounced, if their account had insufficient funds, or if they did a chargeback dispute on their credit card, show it all to the judge. Also show any fees your bank may have charged you, and any penalties you are owed according to your lease agreement. And show all your messages. If you sent your tenant automated or manual payment reminders by text, email, letter, or mail, it's important to show this. While it's usually not needed, it's still good to show that they were made aware of the situation and they were given time to cure and make a payment. This is why it's always best to have everything in writing instead of making any phone calls or only doing face-to-face -face meeting. If you're evicting your tenant for lease violations like noise complaints, unauthorized pets, or property damage, it's important to show proof using any of the following methods. Security cameras, if you have a good surveillance system, you can show them committing the crime or the lease violation, and it's safe to say you will normally win that dispute. Or a video. If you didn't catch them in the act, the next best thing you can do is record a video with your phone of any damages or lease violations. And don't forget pictures. You know, they say a picture is worth a thousand words, and in this case, a picture could be worth thousands and thousands of dollars. Even if you take a video, it's important to show the judge any pictures as well, as it's usually much easier to see by email or printed. And once again, lease terms. Show the court which term they violated within their lease agreement. And don't worry if you don't have every single term spelled out in your rental agreement. In some cases, if the violation is bad enough, it doesn't even need to be listed in the agreement between the landlord and the tenant. As a good practice though, start adding all of the potential reasons you would evict somebody into your agreement. No. A landlord can be sued for a forceful eviction if they skip the proper process. For forceful or self-help evictions in the state of Arizona, tenants can sue their landlords for the following amounts. Either two months rent or twice the actual damages, whichever is greater. Or return of the security deposit and prepaid rent if the tenant decides to terminate the lease. As another consequence of forceful eviction, the statute actually allows tenants to stay in the property and provides for the tenant's court costs and attorney fees. Say it with me. Self-help evictions are illegal. Examples of this include, but are not limited to, cutting off the tenant's electric, water, and or heat supply, changing the locks to prevent the tenant from entering the property, or vandalizing and destroying the tenant's property. According to Arizona Civil Code, you may be liable for the tenant's court costs and attorney fees. This statute also gives the tenant the right to stay. Additionally, a tenant can sue you for actual damages plus violations, and tenants may ask for an injunction prohibiting any further violation during the court action. Whew, that was a lot. So, for more information on landlord-tenant laws in Arizona, be sure to check out this video where I go over a bunch of them with you. Subscribe if you haven't already. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in the next one.